Charlie French. I, I work at Bristow's in London, which is a firm that specialises in life sciences and technology. I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Cambridge, where I studied natural sciences uh, and specialised in biological sciences in particular. So I did my training contract at Linklaters, uh, which is obviously a magic circle firm. My training contract was a really good uh, learning experience. I was thrown in at the deep end from day one, working sort of long hours, given a lot of responsibility. I specialise in intellectual property and uh, patent litigation in particular. Within that, I'm specialised uh, in life sciences, so I work in a lot of pharmaceutical cases and biotech cases. I think I ended up there uh, through a route that I think a lot of people um, follow in this area of law. So at school, I uh, was drawn both to humanities subjects and the sciences. So I studied English literature alongside biology, chemistry and maths at A-level. I decided to study science in my degree and I loved the subject. I loved you know, learning about the intricacies of biochemistry, molecular biology and genetics. Uh, but I sort of missed the essay writing and the close analysis of language. So I didn't see myself following a lifetime in the lab and started looking at other careers where I could use that science knowledge. Um, and I came across patent law uh, in a module that we did as part of my degree on commercialising science and realised that might be the way to use um, my knowledge and my interest in science and marry that up uh, with my more kind of uh, language skills. And so I started seeking work experience, talking to people who worked in the area and soon realised that was going to be a really good option for me. My uh, work as a, a patent litigator working in the life sciences area, I, I focus on litigation in the English courts, so uh, a, a patent owner might be enforcing their patent against an alleged infringer or a party might be seeking to revoke a patent on, on the basis that it's invalid. Obviously, as a litigator, a lot of the cases end up in court, so at some point, uh, unless the parties manage to reach a settlement beforehand and resolve their differences, we'll end up in a trial, but the, the cases themselves last a fairly long time, so it's usually at least a year before you get to the trial, so there's a lot of run-up to that. Um, and on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, as I work through the various stages of the litigation, I might be uh, discussing case strategy with the client, so understanding the commercial background to the case. I might be uh, working with experts to understand the scientific area, to work on their expert reports, drafting statements of case, um, looking at the relevant case law to work out how that fits in with the particular case we've got, um, and working with my team generally to build up the case and prepare the barristers for any hearing or any trial, uh, and lo lots of things in between. So as a, a life sciences solicitor specialising in patent litigation. A lot of my work is in the English court, so preparing uh, a case to go to litigation. I might be acting for a patent owner that wants to enforce their patent against an alleged infringer or for a party that's seeking to revoke a patent because they believe it's invalid. The sort of topics that are covered in that litigation can vary, so I've worked on cases relating to small molecule pharmaceuticals, antibodies and antibody technology, gene cloning and cell expression systems, drug delivery devices, uh, and lots of things in between. In terms of the clinical area, I've done cases relating to types of dementia, cancer, um, neurological disorders, inflammatory disorders like psoriasis, and then rare genetic disorders as well. So, it can be really varied. Alongside the UK litigation, there's almost always an international element to these cases. So a lot of the work I do as well is coordinating global or European litigation strategies for clients. So I'll be working alongside lawyers uh, in other countries to develop the case there, working the expert evidence with them, making sure the cases are aligned to ensure a, a, a global approach that works for the client. Um, and that's a really nice aspect of our job. I've got this sort of global network of 
lawyers I know in different countries, particularly Europe, but also uh, in Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa. We often work alongside US lawyers as well. What I really like about patent litigation in this area is that no two cases are the same. At the beginning of every case, there's always a learning curve. I've, I've got a background in, in life sciences, in biochemistry, and molecular biology, but no one can know everything. So at the start of each case, there's this process of immersing yourself in the science, speaking to experts, trying to understand what was going on in the relevant field at the relevant time. Um, so, so it's always exciting. No two cases are the same. The legal issues differ and they're always intertwined with the, the, the sort of scientific topics. Um, so it's a real intellectual challenge um, and no day is the same really. What do I least enjoy about this area? Um, I think it's probably true of, of most roles as a solicitor. Inevitably as a litigator there are busy periods sometimes which involve long days sitting at your desk. Um, I'm lucky I work for a firm that really prioritises work-life balance, so that's, that's not the expectation, that's not what we do day in, day out, but when you're coming up to trial or you're coming up to an expert deadline, inevitably there are these long days and hours, and I think um, that sort of sitting at your desk um, and, and long days in the office are difficult. I think that's where the importance of having a good team comes in. Um, having good team morale really gets you through those periods and you realise that actually it's exciting and the time flies quite quickly. I think as well over time I've realised the importance of taking a break each day even when everything seems impossible and it looks like you're going to be in the office until the early hours. Just going for a walk at lunchtime and having a break is so important. I think one of uh, the issues that's facing the profession at the moment and we're still trying to work out the best way through is what working life should look like as a solicitor post-pandemic. Obviously during the pandemic we were all working at home for a long time uh, and a lot of good things came out of that in terms of flexible working practices. Um, I think particularly for working parents and those um, who have other interests outside work, the ability to work from home more um, and be a bit more flexible and the times they work have been really important but that now needs to be balanced against coming back into the office and making sure we have a good um, collaborative environment in the office and that training is, is, is good and um, that trainees in particular and junior associates have access to um, seeing how senior lawyers work and getting involved in everything so I think that's something that is, is still in flux at the moment probably something that's quite important to consider when you're looking at, at different law firms and considering a career in law. You know, how often will you be expected to be in the office? Are other people going to be in the office? And what would suit you better and, and your learning experience? It's a really exciting time uh, in patent law. We've just had a new patent court called the Unified Patent Court or the UPC um, that's opened up in Europe and that's going to be a completely new litigation system in Europe. So the, the current system is that um, if you want to obtain a patent to cover your, your drug or your product, um, you have to seek, uh, obtain a separate patent in each jurisdiction in Europe that's of interest. And once those patents grant, you have to litigate all of those separately in each national jurisdiction. Uh, so this new court um, is going to enable you to bring a single action covering a lot of those jurisdictions together. Um, it doesn't cover every country within Europe, so the UK itself isn't a part of it, Spain isn't a part of it, Ireland isn't a part of it at the moment, for example, but if you have a, a French patent, a German patent and a Dutch patent, for example, rather than having to litigate those separately in national courts, you now have an option to uh, bring proceedings centrally in this uh, new unified patent court. They've also introduced a new type of patent called a unitary patent, uh, which will be a single patent covering multiple uh, jurisdictions within Europe. So it's only just opened there. There's no case law yet, and the first cases have only just uh, been filed, but we're all quite excited to follow that and, and see what it means for our clients. 
I think the skills you need to do well in this practice area, um, I think the number one skill is probably intellectual curiosity and being up for a challenge. The, the job involves getting on top of complicated technology fairly quickly and being quite proactive um, at, at learning yourself and understanding um, what's going on. Um, I think time management um, and forward planning is really important as well. Our cases generally last uh, a year or so and deadlines can seem very, very far off at the beginning of the case, but they come up very quickly and a lot of work needs to be done. You'll often need to meet and discuss the case with many, many experts before you find the right one for your case, before you understand the case properly, um, and all sorts of um, things can be thrown in your way in between. So um, you need to plan, but you also need to be able to adapt uh, as things change. What advice would I offer um, to someone considering a career in law and particularly uh, in patent litigation? I think when considering a career in law, the most important thing you can do is get work experience if you can and speak to as many lawyers as you can to understand what they do. Try to get a sense of the differences between different law firms, different areas of law. Look beyond the glossy brochures and get a sense of the culture of different firms and, and areas of law, you know, I think even departments within the same, uh, different departments within the same law firm can be quite different based on the type of work they do. So just try to understand as much as you can um, and get a sense of what you want to do and what, what you'll enjoy and what interests you. Um, although you're, you're not tied you know, to uh, the firm you do your training contract at, it will give you a really good grounding for your career and if you can find a firm um, that focuses on the areas you're interested in and has a culture you um, think you'll enjoy then you're going to have a much better experience. Uh, the one thing I wish I'd known about being a solicitor, I think the most important thing to me is being proactive, taking ownership of things, um, and really taking control of your own destiny. Don't wait to be asked to do something. Um, if you start working on a case, you're not going to be perfect to start with, but put your hand up, volunteer for things, make suggestions, ask questions. Um, you learn by doing as a solicitor, so just get involved in as many things as you can and um, enjoy it. Mm -hmm.